Hey everybody, it's Pina here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make these really pretty little starburst boho flip-flops. Um, basically, it's just um, crocheted around a flip-flop. Um, these flip-flops are cheap. You can just buy them online. I'll put the link in the description below if you're interested in buying one. They're about £2, just over £2 uh, in English money. Um, and you, you know, it's, it makes even an old pair of flip-flops into something new. It, it just transforms a pair of old flip-flops. If, so if you have a, fa a pair of old flip-flops that you really want to throw out, um, just think again and just um, do something around it, decorate it with crochet. So for this, like I said, you're going to need a, a pair of flip-flops. So you'll need two of these, okay, two flip-flops. And the flip-flop that I used is pretty much rubber round here and a rubber sole but um, they are very very easy to um, to work around and I've got this rubber bit of the sole which has got a grippy kind of feeling to it which is even better because it holds all the uh, stitches together so when we work the single crochet around it grips it really well but it's not essential you can use any flip-flops that you have at home or if you want to buy any flip-flop you want. So that comes in various colours as well. You can buy flip-flops any colour that you want to match any colour that you're going to use with it. Now, with, for this particular project, I'm using uh, cotton yarn, and it's 100% cotton DK, and it's Peyton's, and it's one of my favourites. Um, I'm going to put that in the link below. So I'll just show you the yarn that I'm using for this project. So I've got these colours. Uh, I've got white black, this turquoisey blue and a yellow. So I'll just show you what they look like. So that's the yellow, that's the white, that's the turquoise and that's the black. So so basically that's the colours I'm using for this particular flip-flop. Um, you can use any colours you want to match your sole of your flip-flop. So if you've got pink or red or whatever colour, you can always add um, buy these in various colours so they come in very uh, a selection a great selection of colours um, today I'm using these colours so like I said I'm going to put them in the link below and they are 100% cotton they've got a slight sheen to them um, which makes it even nicer for these type of projects so what, what else we're going to need we're going to need um, a crochet hook and for this project I've used a three millimeter crochet hook for this particular project and you're going to need a needle to sew in your ends and that's pretty much it plus a pair of scissors okay that's all you're going to need for this so let's just get started okay so let's just grab our uh, flip-flop and I'm just going to pop that on the side there um, this is also got um, this flip-flop has got um, a drawstring here which can tie around your ankles a couple of times and then you've got the tassels that go with it, which make it even prettier. So you've got these little tiny tassels, which I've added to the uh, end of this long chain. And then the, the actual main part of the, um, the flip-flop is this starburst granny square, which is very easy to do. And uh, you'll need two of those. And then you're gonna, we'll get, we're going to work around the, the straps with single crochet. So let's get started with the straps first because that's what we're going to do first is the straps so I'm going to grab my black yarn for this so grab you go ahead and grab the yarn of your choice I've got the black and I'm going to grab my crochet hook and just pop that aside now for this we're going to start with a, a tie we're going to tie the the yarn onto the flip-flop at the base of the strap. So I'm going to leave a bit of a tail end because we're going to sew that in later on. Okay, so we're going to tie that into the onto the strap, but at the very end as, as possible, and then do a double knot. So I would tie it twice just to secure it. Okay, so once you've done that, we're gonna you can either weave your end in or you can just tie it, um, sort of sew it in at the very end. I'm gonna sew it in at the very end. So once you've tied that onto your flip-flop, we're going to do single crochets all the way around this flip-flop. 
okay this rubber the rubber bit so I'm just going to get my hook and I'm gonna just zoom in so you can see how it's done right so you're gonna grab your hook and place it underneath the uh, rubber and grab your yarn okay and then we're going to do like a slip stitch okay now again we're going to go under grab yarn pull up and we're going to yarn over and pull through two loops that's a single crochet but of course you're leaving it um let's get that through it might be tight at first now push it down to the very end because you want to get that to the very end so keep going all the way by grabbing your yarn, pulling it th through, and then as a single crochet, as you normally would do, you want to just pull that tight as possible. There you go. Grab the yarn, like so, and pull through the two loops on your hook. So you've got to keep going just like that. And then as you're going along, you need to push, push this down to the very end. So you get it fully covered. And you can use your needle to man maneuver it a little, little bit. So then, Again, underneath, pull up the loop from underneath, okay, and then you do a single crochet, like so. And then as you go along, keep pushing it down to the very end and, and make sure they're straight. So you want to make sure that they are lined up, each strand of the yarn is lined up side by side, they're not overlapping. And if they do overlap, you just use your needle, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's say you're doing it like this and then it overlaps. You can just get your needle and um, let's say it's overlapping for example because it might overlap at some point. You just grab your needle and just pull, just straighten it with your needle basically. Make sure they're not overlapping. There you go. So that's perfectly aligned. So it's, it's very difficult to show you on the table. If you've got it on your lap, it's actually much easier to do this. So it's not as difficult as it looks on camera. It's a bit easier. Just got to go on your, put it on your lap and just maneuver your stitches and your sandal the way you want to hold it. So again, yarn over, pull through two underneath. Okay, yarn over, pull through two underneath, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, okay, so now as, as you can see it's crossed over. So we're going to just straighten that. Like so. There we go. And that one's a bit crossed over don't worry too much just straighten it and then you want to push them down as you go along you see so now you've got a very straight lined up strands side by side so it looks like this see how pretty straight that is it's all lined up side by side so that's what you need it to look like so Go ahead, continue the same um, method all the way around your strap, the same way, single crochet all the way around your strap, like so. I'll just do a few more so you can see how it's done. There we go. So that's how it's done. Now what you do is just push them all down to align them like so. Use your nails, use your needle, whatever you need to use. So it's, it looks like that, can you see? So go ahead and do that, single crochet all the way around the strap until you get to the point of the strap and I'll show you what to do. Um, just try and get to the edge as possible, as many in as possible towards the, um, the end of this strap, okay? and I'll meet you right back. Okay, so I've come to the end of the strap and we're heading towards the 
the point of the strap. Now at this stage, just as you're nearing the end of this bit, you want to get this bit straight. This um, so the crochet double uh, single crochet stitches are at the edge. Okay, so we're going to just get the needle and just just pull them down slightly. If they're not in the right position, just pull them down slightly, so that your um, single crochet stitches are at the edge of the strap, especially this front bit uh, here. Not so bad, not so much on that end, but this end here, because this is the bit where we're going to sew the granny square, uh, granny uh, burst square. Um, so we're going to do that and sew that on there, just like this. So that's the bit we sew. Okay, so now continue. Once you've done that, you straighten that up a little bit here and they are nice and neat and straight. We're going to get to the point now. So I might have to do a few more stitches just to get it close to the point. So I'm just going to go ahead and do maybe one or two more uh, single crochets. So let's just see how that is. So that's one. And let's see if two would be enough. Because we're now going to leap over to the other side. So what we need here, we need to straighten this up first of all. So make sure all your stitches are nice and straight. And that one as well. And you might need to spread them out. Just use your nail and your, your needle. So I think I'm just going to put another, maybe another one there. Let's have a look. Let's put another one in before we do cross over to the other side. We don't want to leave too many gaps. So let's put one more there. That might be just fine. Let's have a look. Yeah, and then you just single crochet. I'm just going to go back and do my last single crochet there. There we go. Let's see if that looks any better. So just make sure that's nice and straight. And I might just go for one more. So here we go. one more. Right, so now we're going to chain one, okay, so we can cross over to the other side. Now turn your sat, your sandal or flip-flop and I'm just going to straighten this a little bit more, spread them out nice and evenly, like so. There we go. So play around with it and then we're going to go and start doing a single crochets well, a few single crochets down the down this side. So we're going to do the same again. Pull up a loop and single crochet. There we go. Now I've locked that into place now. So now that's into place, I'm just going to spread it all out evenly. Okay. So that's your other side starting okay so now continue again I'm going to do a few more single crochet so you can see how it's done so the same process again on this side insert your hook underneath grab the yarn pull through two again pull through the two now again as you go along, make sure you're pushing them together and making sure it's nice and lying nice and flat and straight. There we go. And then continue. This part is a little bit of a process. But once you get this part done, it's it's fine thereafter. Single crochet all the way down. And 
And there we go. And what you do now is you're just going to, um, as you go along, same thing as before, you want to push this all the way down. So make sure you do, it makes it easy as you go along rather than if you do it right at the very end because you won't be able to do it, it's going to be very difficult. So just keep pushing them down like so. Okay, so once you've made sure that's nice and neat and tidy and uh, it they are close together, each strand, you can then start going all the way down here as you did before. So I'll let you continue with that, that all towards the end. And when you get to the very end, I'll show you how to finish off the strap. Okay, so once you've reached the end of your flip-flop, I'm um, just going to make sure that you do right to the very end your last few single crochets. <laughs> it might be a bit difficult getting into that angle, but you can try get it as close as you can, like this. I'm just trying to get it as close as I possibly can. Um, it might be a bit fiddly at first, but there we go. I might be able to fit another one or two in. So just check and see, make sure they're straight again with your needle. So you need to get your needle to straighten them up. I'm just going to do that so it's nice and straight. There we go. And then just give it a tug and keep going until you feel like that's you know near enough to the very end. You don't have to go to the very end, but it, it does look nicer. If, so I might just do another one. Go as far as you can to make sure you've got um, your last stitch in, possibly. Let's have a look. I think that might be okay. I think I'll just stop there because, it, you know, just spread them out nicely so that you can... Um, that's right. Leave no gaps. But what we can do now, as we're tying off um, our end, we can grab a long piece of stra of, uh, of the yarn, cut it off, and what we can do here, so that it's nice and secure, what we can do is we can just pull it through, there you go, as if you're finishing off, and then what you can do is you can just tie in, just wrap it round a couple of more times just to fill in that last little space at the bottom, like so. I'm just gonna go through it a few times so that it's hiding the the rubber so it matches the other side as you can see that one's really far down so i'm having it to match the same as the other side so just keep going until you're confident that that rubber is covered push it down if you have to So here we go, that's right, that should be fine. So once you're confident that's right to the end, more or less, and that's all straightened up, you've straightened all of these um, these bits up to your sand, for your sandal, and that the single crochets are actually at the edge, because that's the bit we're gonna attach the, the next bit on, the starburst granny square. So now you're gonna tie in your ends. So to tie in your ends, basically, We've got this end first, and I'm going to put my needle in. I'm just going to snip that off a little bit because it's too long. And I'm going to put my needle in. And for this bit, we're just going to literally at the back, just at the back, you're going to thread your yarn through the back where it doesn't show. So I'm just going to do that all the way. It's not, it's not too much of an issue because it's right at the back, so it should be hidden. Just twist it around so you can make sure it's right at the back. Like so. And there we go. And then again, just come back the other way so that you've secured it. I 
Okay, so when you're confident that's nicely done and then go to the other side and again the same thing. Thread your needle through. And I'm just going to go behind again, like so. And just keep going until you feel like it's nice and secure, backwards and forwards. Okay, so go ahead and do that with your ends, and I'll meet you right back when you've done that. Okay, so now you've done that, you've, you've tied in all your ends, and you've made sure these are all nice and straight. Make sure all your single crochets are on the edge of your um your front of your sandal so i've got them nicely neatened on the edge there and there we go that's that's all done that bit's done so that's the preparation for your sandal so the next step is we're going to do the granny square and that is just we're going to make that on its own first of all and attach it to the flip-flop so let's go ahead and do that so for this we're going to grab our yellow yarn and i'm just going to grab my yellow yarn and then i'm going to just do a magic ring to start with okay so let's start with the magic ring um if you're not familiar with a magic ring this is how you do it um you just wrap your yarn up twice round your two fingers like that put your hook in underneath like so and grab the yarn underneath like so so you've got a, a loop on your hook then you just hold that together like so let go and we're going to now chain up three from here so one two and three okay so now you've got your little circle you can pull it a bit tighter if you want okay so now for this we're going to do 16 um, double crochets into this magic ring including this chain two so yarn over and into the magic ring pull up a loop pull through two pull through two yarn over hook into the ring pull up a loop pull through two pull through two yarn over into the ring pull through two pull through two and keep going doing your double crochets until you've got 16 of these including the chain two and i'll meet you right back when you've done that Okay, so I've done 16 into my um, magic ring and I'm just going to pull the the end of this, uh, the tail end here and tighten up my ring. There you go. So you've got a circle now. Um, and now for this bit, we're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three, chain three um, that you've done. So just on the top, slip stitch like so. Tighten that, that, that all up. Okay, now you're going to um, do a chain and cut off your yarn. So I'm just going to cut that off and pull that tight. There you go. So you've done your centre bit now for your granny square starburst. So grab your hook again and pick up your circle and just anywhere on the circle you can start <laughs> by inserting your hook and get the yarn and pull it through any stitch. Okay. So now from here, we're going to chain up three. So one, two, and three. That's three chains. And um, we're going to do, uh, we're going to yarn over three times into the same space. So yarn over into the same space, pull up a loop. Okay. Yarn over into the same space, pull up a loop. Yarn over into the same space, pull up a loop. Until you've got, should have seven loops on your hook. Pull through all seven. Okay, tighten that up a little bit. Chain one. Okay, and then into the next stitch, we're going to do the same again. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Again, you should have seven on your, on your hook and pull through all seven and chain one. And do the same again. One, two, three. That's three loops, and and then seven all together on your hook. Pull through all seven, chain one, 
and carry on all the way around. So I'll meet you at the other end just before you do your last one and show you how to finish off this round. Okay, so I've done 14, you need 16 of these um, stitches. So I'm just gonna do my last two to make 16. So I'm just gonna put my hook into there. Make sure your yarn is um, sewed in with it. So that's one. Sorry. One, two, three. And pull through all seven. Okay, and then we're going to do another one, the last one. So I'm just going to go into that last stitch there and do three loops into there. Okay, so pull through all seven and then chain one. So now you've done this second round, I'm going to slip stitch in the top of the chain three that we started, just there. Slip stitch into there. Okay, and then chain one and tie off. Okay, so that is your second row of the circle completed. And just pull it tight. And then we're gonna do the next color, which is this color, the turquoise. So we're gonna do that color next. Okay, so I'm going to grab my turquoise yarn. All right, now for this bit, we're going to put our hook into any of these chain one spaces. It doesn't matter which one you put it in. It's perfectly okay. So I'm just going to pop it anywhere, which is just here. And then I'm going to pull up some yarn through. Okay and we're going to chain up three from here so one two and three there you go that's three chains now i'm going to go straight in now and do this stitch so i don't know i'm not sure what it's called but i'll show you how it's done so yarn over put your hook in pull up a loop pull through two yarn over put your hook in pull up a loop pull through two Yarn over, put your hook in, pull up a loop and pull through two again. So you have four loops on your hook. Pull through all four. Give that a little tug. Chain two, one and two. Okay, so now the next stage is into the next chain one space. You do exactly the same. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, pull through two. So you've got the four, four loops that you've done by inserting your hook in there. And then you've got this other one, which is already on your hook. So that makes five now on your hook. So the only one you're going to get four loops on your hook is your very first one. All the rest are going to have five loops on your hook. Pull through all five, chain a two, and then continue the same way into the next stitch. So, so you should have five loops again on the hook. So pull through all five and chain two. So continue that all the way round until I'm, I'll meet you on your last stitch and show you how to finish off this round. Okay, so I've done my my uh, 15 uh, of these stitches, so I need another one more to make 16. So you should have 16 of these. So I'm just going to do my last one, so into that last chain space. So that's one, two, three, four, five loops on the hook, pull through five, chain two, Okay, chain two. And now what you're going to do is you're going to slip stitch on the top of this stitch here. And there's a little V there, just there. Can you see? We're just going to put a hook into there and slip stitch into there. So there we go. And then chain one and this just tie off your, cut off your yarn. There we are. So I'm just going to pull that. And there you go. You should have 16 of those as well. So 
that completes the starburst now we're going to do the outer bit of the starburst granny square and that is the the black uh, border bit um, so I'm just going to grab my black yarn okay for this you grab your black yarn and I'm going to do a standing stitch and I've got a video on standing stitches which I'll put in the link below if you really want to to know how to do them and I find it a lot nicer with especially with cotton so for this okay so for this you're just going to grab your yarn between your two fingers and you're going to yarn over onto your hook three times so make sure that's in your fingers there kept taut and and we're going to yarn over three times one two three now insert your hook anywhere on this um, circle any space that you want to insert it in so I'm going to insert it on I'll insert it over here and I'm going to pull up a loop pull through two pull through two pull through two keeping hold of this yarn end here you're going to yarn over two times now and put your hook into the same space pull up a loop pull through two pull through two pull through two now you can let go of that tail end okay so now you're going to do a third one so yarn over twice and do another treble into there we go so that's a treble crochet standing stitch that I just did at the first beginning and then two other treble stitches there now this 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 is the court this is the start of a corner um, so that's part of the corner so now what we're going to do now we're going to do um, some other stitches across here until we get to the other corner and then we do three trebles again so the next in the next uh, space you're going to do a double three double crochets so yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop pull through two pull through two yarn over insert your hook pull through two pull through two and again and pull through two pull through two that's that's three doubles three double crochets into this next space we're going to do three half half doubles so yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop pull through three loops on your hook yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop and pull through three again on your hook and do the same again until you have three half double crochets okay now to mirror the other side we're going to do double crochets so three double crochets into this space so that's one two three okay now once you've done that you go into the corner now we're going to do a corner and for that we're going to do three trebles to start with so yarn over twice insert your hook pull through two pull through two pull through two yarn over twice insert your hook pull through two pull through two pull through two and then another one yarn over yarn over twice and insert your hook pull through two pull through two pull through two now that's your three trebles into that space now because this is the corner we're going to chain three so one two three okay yarn over twice and do three trebles into the same space so one two and three okay so we've done our first corner and now again we're going to do double crochet into the next space so you do three of those three double crochets and then three half double crochets so that's one two and three okay and then three doubles into the next one so one two three we've come to a corner now so we're going to do trebles so three trebles one two three Okay. chain three one two three and then three trebles into the same space to create the next corner so that's one two and three 
Okay, so three trebles there, that's created your second corner. And then carry on all the way through, doing the same thing again. So that's, you've got your corners down. Now go ahead and do the rest of this round until you get to that, the last corner, and I'll show you how to finish off. Okay, so I'm at the corner now, and because we've done half of the corner here, I'm just gonna put that tail end down so it's out of the way. So we've done the last corner here, the, uh, sorry, the half of the very first corner, and we're gonna make that a completed corner now. So um, do your treble, into that three trebles into that same space and we're going to insert a hook and do our three trebles so one let me do that again that's two and then the third one just doing the third treble, just shift over and do your third treble. And now chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna slip stitch on the top of the very first, it's the very first standing stitch, which is just here, the V is just there. So we're gonna slip stitch right into there, into that V and just pull through, okay? Yarn over, chain one, and cut off your yarn. So you've now got your square with all the corners made up. Okay, so your square's completed, okay? Now all we're gonna do now is tie in our ends. So I'm just gonna grab my needle and thread the yarn through. And this is the center bit, and I'm just going to sew underneath where I can see uh, the stitches are. Just, just go underneath the stitches underneath like that. And then just go backwards and forwards until you find it's pretty secure. Like so. Okay, so go ahead now and tie your ends, all your ends. Now that's my middle. So just tie all your ends in and literally just make sure that they're all underneath, your ends are all incorporated underneath and then I'll come back to you when you've done that. Okay, now that you've done your, your black border, we're gonna do one more single crochet border just to neaten off the edges so that we can sew it onto the, to the flip flop. So for this, you're just gonna do single crochet all the way around. Now I'm going to do a standing stitch single crochet, so I'm just going to yarn over once and I'm going to insert my hook anywhere here, um, the middle bits is better than the corner, so I'm just going to pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through these two strands, okay? So that's your single crochet standing stitch. Now I'm going to do another one just next to it, so um, I'm just going to put my, my hook into there and do a single crochet, okay? And let go, and now you can just do single crochet all the way around, that's all this is, this this um, this round is just a single crochet all the way around, okay? In every stitch, until you get to the corner, and when you get to the corner, okay, what you do is, you do three single crochets into that corner, so one, two, three, Turn your work and again start again don't miss this stitch here which is tucked away sometimes and do a single crochet into that one 
and every other one after that. So single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, until you get to the other corner. Now this is pretty, pretty straightforward, so I'll let you carry on with that. So basically, all you do is, um, you do single crochet, single crochet, until you get to the corner, and then you do three single crochets in each corner. Okay, so that's all you do, and I'll meet you right to the other end, and I'll show you how to finish off this round. Okay, so now I've finished all my single crochet uh, border, and uh, we're going to finish off with a invisible join. And that makes it easier when you're sewing it onto here, um, that you'll be able to have all your stitches intact. So I'm just going to show you how to do an invisible join. So um, basically your last stitch, which is this one here, my last single crochet, I'm just going to pull that out, like um, cut it off first actually. Just cut it up, cut off a long strand, about that much. So I'm just going to pull that out like that. You see? Now I'm going to get my needle and I'm going just to just to lift up my V from my very first standing crochet. I'm just going to get my V. You can see it there, just there is the V. There we go. That's the V of my very first stitch, which is a standing single crochet stitch. So I'm going to get my needle, thread it through with this yarn that I've left off, like so. Right, so once you've done that, we're just going to do a nice invisible join. It makes things look nice, especially with cotton. So I'm just going to go through the back of this very first single crochet. Okay, come through this way. Pull your yarn through this way. And we're going to now insert our hook into the last stitch. So from the first one to the last one that we did. So insert our hook into the V, just there. You can see because it's black, but you can see there's a V there as well. So I'm going to insert my hook, my 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 needle, sorry, into there, and go down into the back, like so. Okay. So now that you just pull it through, and you've got yourself a nice V join there. You won't see any knots, any bulges, nothing. It just looks perfectly just like the other stitches. That's all it looks like. And then from there, you can just literally sew your ends in from there and um, just literally weave it into the back like that, into the stitches at the back. Just keep going until you've weaved it all in. And you can see the Vs, you see? You can't really tell. I don't know if you can see on camera because it's black, but you can you can't really tell which is the the invisible join because it looks like the rest of the stitches. Okay, so that's how I like to finish off on cotton. So go ahead now and sew the rest of your ends in, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to sew the rest of these ends in, and then I'm going to show you how to attach this to the flip flop. Okay. Okay, so now to, to attach this square to the uh, flip-flop, I've threaded my needle with the yarn, the black yarn, and I've cut off uh, a fair amount, um, just enough to sort of sew one side, and then we're going to sew the other side separately. But anyway, this should be enough maybe for both sides, we'll see. So anyway, so we'll take our square, and you can start any end you want really, I mean, you could just you know, any end would be fine. So I'm going to attach it this way. Now, <laughs> you want the point to be, because you've got three single crochets in the middle there, you've got one, two, three, you want to go to the middle one, the middle single crochet, which is this one here, just here. Now we're going in the back loop only, okay? We're going to do back loops only. And on this one, we're going to do a uh, front loop. So it's front loop to back loop attached. So Let's get our, our needle and thread, and I'm just going to zoom in for you so you can see clearly. Right, so here, what we're going to attach by starting in our very middle single crochet, back loop only, okay? And we're also going to attach 
uh, front loop only in one of these single crochets that we did um, before okay so I'm just going to put my needle through there and then through the middle of the back loop of the single crochet at the point of the square and pull my needle through and we're going to do this whip, uh, I think it's called whip stitch so basically that tail end just tuck it inside for now okay and we're going to do a whip stitch so basically again the same process I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see right okay so we're going to do the front loop from from here and the back loop from the square if you can see might be difficult to see because again it's black yarn so so again we're going to grab the front of the single crochet onto the strap and then the back loop of this single crochet from the square and do like a whip stitch and again front loop back loop of the square can you see that so front loop and back loop of the square and front loop back loop of the square okay so front loop oops front loop back loop of the square and then pull that tight so you've got this nice little sort of ridgy look to it and it's uh, it's just like the I'll show you the um, the one that I've done so it's going to look like this. It's got a slight little ridgy look to it. I don't know if you can see just there. So, and just there. Okay, so that gives it that nice little effect. So now I'm just going to continue doing the whip stitch all the way down. So, whip stitch all the way down. And remember front loop off from the strap, back loop from the square. And don't pull it too tight, just do it um, a normal tension. So that's what you don't need to do now until you get to the end. Now when you get to this end, um, you're going to finish off in the middle the middle of single crochet and I'll show you how to do that so work your way up until the middle of the single crochet and I'll show you how to finish off this side okay so I've done that and I've come towards the 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 other corner here okay and now what we need to do is um, as you can see I've got the, the middle of the three double crochets and I've got the back loop here now I'm going to go into the next anywhere um, you can grab two sides now of the strap, two sides of the single crochet, and go into the back loop of the um, the single crochet on on the actual square. Now you've created that. There you go. You've sealed it down to the strap now. Now all you need to do is go back into the back of the cro single crochet you've come out of, and back into the back loop of the um, square single crochet of the corner and just do it a couple of times you can go in and out just to seal that in place not too many times you don't want a big bulging bit there so that's that so now all you need to do is do the other side so I'm going to cut my yarn off here um, I might have enough to do the other side so I'm going to cut my yarn off leaving a fair amount of tail end because you want to sew that in afterwards okay so that's that side done and that's going to be sewn in at the back of the sandal when we finished now going back to this side if you have enough uh, thread left or yarn you're going to be able to use that again if not just thread it through again some more yarn and for this side we're going to do exactly the same thing but we're going to whip stitch 
um, this way round. Okay, so we turn our work, and what we're going to do again, we're going to start um, from the corner here again because we want to make sure that's in the right place when we go down this side. Okay, so it's exactly the same as the other side. So I'm just going to go into the one of these stitches on the strap and go into my back loop again. There we are. Now I'm going to just leave that out, this tail end, because that's going to be sewn in anyway, so that's fine. Now for this bit we're just going to whip stitch back down this way, okay? So again you take the front of the loops from single crochet on the strap and the back loop of the square, Sing the single crochet on the square. Okay, so now we're going to go back this way and do a whip stitch the opposite way. So it's like a reverse whip stitch because we're going this way down now. There you go, just keep doing that. I don't know if you can see, sorry, it's off camera. So I'm just going to go into the Back loops, there you go, off the front. Right, so when you see it's all attached now, it's getting attached on this side. Now work your way down all the way down. Um, now you could start this way if you wanted and whip stitch that way if it makes it easier, but sometimes when you get to the end, it may not be perfectly aligned. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So you make sure the point is perfectly aligned. And that way you can, um, you know, get it all right when you get to the other end. So I'm just going to continue this way till we get to the other end. Insert your needle into the back loops, the front loop of the strap and the back loop of the square. Work your way all the way down. Okay, keep going. It's not too important if you miss any of these stitches out from the um, the strap, but it is important to not miss out on the um, square. So do every single back loop stitch from the square. Sew that down until you come to the middle. Let's give that a bit of a tug. Until you come to the middle of the... Um, I'm not quite there yet. I've got one more stitch before I come to the middle. So now I've come to the middle now, so you can see the middle single crochet just there. Okay, there's the middle one. Now that's the back loop, so I'm going to seal my last stitch into there. Okay, so I'm going to go through it a couple of times and just stitch it so it's nice and secure. Okay, and then of course go through the other way so I can tie my ends in. So I'm just going to take that off for a moment and show you how it looks. Okay so now all we need to do is sew our ends in. That's all that needs to be done next. So that's all you need to do. So start in with your corner here. Your um, Zoom out so you can see. We're going to um, tie the end in there first. So let's just go ahead and do that. Just thread our needle like so. There we go. Now, as you can see, there is um, if there is a little gap there, okay, you want to close that up. So just literally just do this. Just sew it so it looks nice and neat and close that little gap up if you want to. So you can just... There you go. 
So you've now, uh, where the rubber's showing, you can hide that just by sewing that. So that's, that's the thing. So hide your ends in as you go along. You don't want to show any of your ends. You want to completely hide them. So I'm just going to sew that through that side and through this side as well. There we go. So it's nice and neat. And then obviously down underneath the sandal, you're just going to put your next uh, thread through of yarn. So it's all hidden underneath. It's not, um, there's no bits showing. Like so. Right, I'm going to cut that off. Once it's secure enough, just cut that off like so and then um, of course you've got your other tail end here sew that in as well and then sew these tail ends I'll do this one side to show you how it is and then you do the other side so sew this tail end in by just literally just going into the inside of the sandal then back out so that's nice and secure okay and then what you do is um, underneath the sandal, you can just again, go through again, where it's not showing underneath. So just sew it backwards and forth, like that. make sure this one is particularly secure because this is the bit where you don't want it to become unattached because it is the corner bit here where it attaches to the, the sandal so I'm just going to nip that off and then go ahead and do the other side the same way and any other ends that are hanging out just just sew them in underneath the sandal and I'll come back to you when you've done that okay so now that you've done that um, we're going to do the straps okay and so that's all sewn on the ends are all sewn in and all we're going to do now is attach the uh, the straps which is quite pretty straightforward to do so you're going to grab your yarn now and we're going to do double chains okay um, you can do as many chains as you want this fits around my ankle twice comfortably so it depends how many how many times around your ankles you want to um, wrap it round. and in the picture you'll see how it's actually in the picture on on the video you'll see how it's wrapped round round the ankles how nicely it's wrapped so we're just going to do that now and for that we're going to um basically we need to do the chain first so you can do a chain as as many as you want it's there's no set rules i'm not sure how many i did on this one but um these are these this can come off you can take these off so you know just to and then you can just put it back on again if you wanted to so i'm going to do i'm going to get double strands for this because that's going to be too thin so i'm just going to double strand it to a certain length um any length that is suitable for you um it doesn't really matter really uh, so this length here i'm just going to remove this from here so you can see how long this one is and I'll measure it if you want to to know the, the measurement of that one okay so I've got my tape measure and I'm just going to measure that so that's about let's have a look how long that is without the tassels I'm measuring it at the moment so that is about without the tassels I would say it's about 28 and a half inches okay 28 and a half inches long without the tassels uh, so do, go ahead and do your chain about that length if you want it that length it depends on how you want it around your ankle so it's not no no there's no um, set rule on how long you you can have your chain but I'm going to do mine as double double yarn because it's nice and thick and so I'm just going to roughly guess how many how much yarn I'll need so it might need a bit longer right I'm going to now chop that off because it's double yarn and make sure it's nice and straight 
Yes, it's fine. So here we go. So I'm going to do it to about 28 and a half inches, the same as the other one, <coughs> or I'm just going to measure it against the other one. So let's go ahead and chain that. So literally, I'm just grab my hook, put my loop on the hook like this. Okay. And then what we're going to do is just keep chaining until you've got your desired length. through yeah so keep chaining until you've got your desired length of your your ankle strap okay so I've done it the same length as the other one so it's exactly the same length as my other strap okay and I'm just now going to put that aside a moment and I'm going to finish off this so now that you've done that the length that you require you you know you you want so you just pull the yarn through um, cut it off if it's too long just pull it through, cut it off, and there you go. That's your, that's that end, and that's that end. Okay. So now what you do is, um, we're just going to trim that off a bit more, so it's not too long yet. And I'm just going to do the tassel. So what I did was 12 strands. Okay, and I doubled them up to make the tassel. Um, you fold it over, make the tassel and it becomes 24 strands. So just cut 12 strands of a certain length. I'll just grab some yarn and show you. So first of all, what you're going to do is just trim this off just a little bit, not too much, just trim this off and then trim the other one off too. So that'll be hidden in the tassel anyway, or part of it, it'll be part of the tassel. So I've just cut them off like that and now what we're going to do is do the tassel. So as I said, I've done 12 strands for this for this one, but you can do more if you want. So do t uh, let's say we want about this length, which is this. You double. Don't forget you're doubling it up, so you'll need it about about that length. Okay, which is if I have to measure that, that's going to be about. Let's get my tape measure. But of course, you do it any length you, you require. It's not essential to have it this length. So each strand I've done about, it's about five inches. Yeah, about five inches each strand long. Okay, but you can go, you know, do it as you wish really. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So that's 12 strands. And of course, when you double it up, it's 24 strands. So, okay, so that's 12 strands. Go ahead and do um, two separate lots of 12 strands, okay, for the, for the two tassels. And I'll meet you right back. There you go. So I've done my two lots of 12 tass um strands of yarn I've done this a bit longer but it doesn't matter because you're going to trim it off anyway so um, just go ahead and cut your ends like this so you've got all your tassel ends cut out and then the other side like so just make sure all your tassel ends are cut all right so that's that's that lot and then I'll do this one and there you go so that's that so now what you do is um we're going to thread this through the um through the chain okay so to do that you can use your hook again and on your last chain here not the very end one but just the one before that so it doesn't fall fall out okay it's nice and tight there as you can see we're going to thread through the the group of tassels and just grab your hook and pull it through. It might be a bit a bit difficult, but you'll be you'll just squeeze it through as much as you can. So just hold on to it and squeeze it through the hole in the tassel. Or if you find it a bit complicated, you can always do a few at the time. So for example, what I did was took half of it, like so, and then just squeeze that through the hole, like so. There you go. So 
just hold on to that that's it and then you just do the other lot as well so I'm just going to get hold of that and squeeze that through as well so you can always adjust it once it's in through the hole there you go and then just pull one side so it's like this okay so now you've got your tassels uh, just straighten them up a, bit, a little bit you have to worry too much because we're going to trim them anyway so just do that okay now what we do now is <clears throat> tuck all the short ends in like so from the um, chain that's it tuck, tuck that in into the tassel like so you can see okay <laughs> so now you've got a clean smooth start of the tassel now we're going to get a little bit of um, the yarn just a little bit to tie it so it doesn't have to be a big bit just a tiny bit and then just on the top just like this one here we're going to um, just place that underneath like so okay and about not too far down but just about there you want to tie it okay so get hold of your yarn and just tie it like this and position it so it's the same as the other one okay and do a double knot like so Right, so now that's that's it, that's all you do. So now you want to trim it. So I'm going to trim it the same size as my other tassel. So I'm just going to go and trim that. I think that's about the same size. Yes, it is. So that's your other tassel. So that's the tassel from your other sandal. So go ahead now and do exactly the same like I showed you on the other side of your um, your chain okay now that you've done your tassels and you've got your two tassels the same length for each sandal um, we're going to attach the tassel so I'm going to grab my um, flip-flop and show you how that's done so you can do it anyway you can do it one of two ways um, you can either attach it this way under okay and you've got your loop and you just pull your 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 ends through and have it like that if you want okay <laughs> or you can have it this way which I have done and then you just instead of threading it from under you can thread it from above which is just there and again just thread the two lengths through uh, making sure they're even evenly pulled through and then just give it a little pull and it becomes a little knot like that okay so that's the way I like to have it and then you just tie it around your ankle and then it becomes I'm just going to attach the other one again to make it exactly the same so again I'm going to put it from put it in from above Actually, it's from below, I think. No, it's from behind, from behind, from above. It doesn't really matter. It's it still, it still looks great. So there you go. It's exactly the same as the other one. So you've got the two matching ones, and let's just check that's all. Yep, that's all level. So you've got the same length on both sides, exactly the same, and there you have it. There's your bow starburst boho sandals and they are absolutely pretty so beautiful you can wear them you know for a nice summer's day out um they're absolutely beautiful and um if you see in the picture how they're wrapped around your ankle you'll get an idea how it's how it's meant to go around your ankle with the tassels hanging to give it that lovely little boho look so there you are there's your lovely boho sandals and I hope you enjoyed watching how to make this uh, these sandals on this tutorial and if you like this video please like and subscribe 
and hit on the notification bell for more of my crochet videos so that you can learn some new designs and techniques and uh, yeah so I hope to see you in the next video thank you very much for watching see you back soon bye